first on BBC Two, Peter Purvis and Jessica Home bring us the highlights of the day at Crofts. Welcome to Crofts. Tomorrow night, we'll know who is going to be best in show 1998, and the judging is already well underway. With over 20,000 dogs and 164 different breeds, well, the competition is going to be intense, but ultimately, only one dog can win through. The task of choosing the winning dog lies with the judges, and during the past three days, they've judged the working, the terrier, and the hound groups. We'll be bringing you the highlights of those later on in the programme. But Crufts is really all about people who love their dogs. He's mad. <laughs> so we sit and try and keep him quiet. We arrive about three hours early just so we can get him in the ring peacefully. I've been coming to Crufts for 34 years. It's great to have our dogs here to show them off. It's just good fun. It's good fun. Everything under one roof. That's the, the variety. Oh, it's quite exciting to be here, obviously. Having qualified to get here, it's, you know, one makes the effort to come on the day. There's no other place like it, really. This year, Crufts is bigger than ever because there's a whole extra hall, an excellent opportunity for more people, more dogs, more trade stands, and most importantly, for you to end up buying things you never knew you needed. Demonstrating a dematting comb, and it takes all the mats out without actually cutting the coat. Quite therapeutic, actually, after a hard day's work. And what every exhibitor should have, this is a dog grooming jacket. The dog hair won't go through it. You can bung it in the wash, and it's full of dead snazzy fabric as well. Down here, well, it looks like a sporran. It actually isn't. It's a very useful pouch for putting your scissors or whatever else you want in. And this looks like cloth. If I can get it out, it is actually cloth, but unfold it, it's a dog water bowl. Now I'm going to say two rude words on BBC television. I'm actually allowed to because these are poo shits. They're a cross between poodles and shih tzus, and this is Winnie and this is Poo. And if I put Winnie down here, there's a wonderful new product on sale at Crufts, which is a special puppy piddle mat. So, so long as little Winnie, Winnie, so long as little Winnie here doesn't pee on my feet and pees on the mat, it's got an absorbent top surface but a non-absorbent back surface so the pee won't soak through and your floor won't get wet. In this country, when we want to transport our dogs, we normally put them in the back of an estate car. But on the continent, they use trailers. And this is the very latest super-duper one on offer in this country. Look at this space. All the room you want to store stuff in there. Five big compartments for your dogs, big enough for even the biggest ones to get in. This is Aiku. Look at that. Tons of space and safety as well. It's thermally insulated, so the dogs stay cool in the summer, they stay warm in the winter. It is strong, immensely strong, so it's very safe. Now it's time for Spot the Dog. The judges here at Crafts have got years of hands-on experience, so much so they could probably do their job blindfolded. Well, we've decided to put that to the test. What we're going to do is we're going to take a dog from each group, a well-known judge and a blindfold. We're going to put the two together, the judge and the dog, and see if the judge can tell which breed it is simply by putting their hands on. Now, for our first judge, we have Michael Quinney here. We've got a dog from the working group. I've got a stopwatch. And Michael, I'm going to put your hands on the dog, then I'm going to start the stopwatch. You've got 30 seconds to tell us which breed it is and talk us through what it is you're thinking. Right, hands on the... You need to come forward a step. There we are, hands on the dog. Stopwatch starting. Now, what are you thinking? A wedge-shaped head. Uh, and I'm not quite sure the ears. They seem to be lying back, but I have a feeling they might be erect. Probably there's a slight resentment that I'm wearing a blindfold. I hope the animal's not got a too strong guarding instinct. It's rather a lot of pressure to put on a dog. Sensitive. Running out of time, we're getting there. 20 a seconds. Smooth coat, straight legs. I would say either a smooth collie or a Malinois. I'll say a Malinois. And exactly on the 30 seconds. Well done, Michael. 
Now it's time for the working group, and this year's judge is Lionel Hamilton Rennick. Well, it's the last time it'll be a show, uh, the show as a, as a one big group, because it's going to be split next year, working and pastoral. So it's a very big group to wade through. It's tiring. It really has a unique atmosphere, uh, and the vastness of it. I mean, when you walk into the Best in Show ring, it's such a huge area. You're very alone. <laughs> and so to the working group, the largest of the six groups with 42 breeds, looking absolutely superb when they're spread out all around the green bays in the big ring. The judge for this year, Lionel Hamilton Rennick, a man with an enormous amount of experience. First up, the Bouvier de Flandre champion Canix Zena, winning best of breed at Crufts at just 18 months old for owner breeder Carrie Wilberg. Now, this bitch was born in quarantine, but she was made up as a champion just five days after her first birthday. Quite a first year. That is really so. I bet she's an amazingly big, bold looking girl for a bitch with an expression calculated to freeze you where you stand. It's now used by police forces all over the world. Rough of coat but not of temperament. Very solid in bone, and when we see her move, she really has got a driving stride. I think this lady produces the most superb animals, and this is yet another success story. Very sound, not at all overstated. Well, there's nothing exaggerated about the animal, just good. Now, I think a very elegant and also a very popular working breed, this, the boxer, Lula, or champion Santanoke's Bebopper Lula, owned and bred by Annabelle Zamet. She had a best in show at the Midland Boxer Club last weekend, so an omen, perhaps. With a name like that, it's not terribly surprising. Interesting, the second bitch in the final lineup. That's a breed typical head and eye and a very proud arch to her neck. Two and a half year old, you said? Well, for me, she just needs a wee bit more on her ribs to bring her to full maturity. But what a piston-like action that is of her hindquarters and her forequarters playing their part in really true balance. Lovely mover. Very tidy dog. She's actually never beaten as a puppy and she was runner-up top bitch for 1997, so she's done well in the numerically strong breed. Champion Amazon Sound Machine is a three-year-old Doberman belonging to Clive and Nancy Evans, who also bred him. He was top dobe for 96 and the top sire for 97, so he's also proved himself. And he still sleeps on the bed. <laughs> Glory be, there can't be much room for anybody else. We've got used to these, the normal black and tans, but this chap's the less well-known brown and tan, with the same straight legs, but with a relatively lighter eye colour, when you see his head, you can just see that there is a slight difference. You see it there. Another great favourite with the crowd, and as an all-purpose guard and tracking dog, it's not surprising. Muscular, sinewy, with a long-reaching, powerful stride and a firm, strong top line on the move. On to the giant schnauzer. I love this breed, Mike. Foxwood Incognito. Jake is just 17 months old, belonging to Keith and June Mags and bred by Norma and Wayne Raylance. Another very impressive young stallion of a dog. Hardly, as you say, out of the canine equivalent of short trousers, but ready to take on the world. Good head and neck and a real zest for life, which quite obviously appealed to Lionel's eye who's looking always for anatomical symmetry and there he's got it a dog that really moves as one with his handler going straight fore and aft in perfect coordination i quite like to see a little bit of puppy cantering too i mean yes. it's a young dog and, and that joie de vivre in the ring it adds a little that, bit extra that sometimes just lovely you've got to excuse that sort of thing when you're judging beautiful Champion Wetonian the Equalizer is a veteran Hungarian Puli with a tremendous show record. Avril Lacy and Stan Swizitsky bred him, and it's Avril handling today. He's a favourite of yours, isn't he, Mike? He is indeed. I, I judged him uh, at a show in Bath, and this was my group winner. And I must say, out of this group so far, I think he is a cracker. All that sort of corded camouflage of a coat just can't disguise the fact that the framework underneath it really propels him along. He's just like a railway engine. We could use a few like him from Birmingham International down to Euston, I reckon. <laughs> They're a charming breed too, aren't they? They've got lovely natures. Superb. But don't anybody mistake how much time it would take to look after a coat like that. Not a job for a novice.
And now there is a head that really typifies a very, very beautiful dog. And I'm sure this is going to be Peter's tip for the top. <laughs> Champion Karazan loves a risky business. This is a Newfoundland bred by the Colgans and owned by Phyllis Colgan and Carol Stuckey. It's Carol handling in the ring. Yet another from that famous Colgan kennel. A lovely dog. And it's got that interesting coat that gives the impression of waterproofing like a wax jacket and yet it's got a distinct gleam on it. Lovely balance coupled with good handling and a way of going which looks so confident. I, I think they're a superb breed. I'm not surprised that they're popular. Real gentle giants too. A powerful dog, but with the most divine nature. Now, Lionel Hamilton Rennick has to make his decision. He has his final six dogs there. Going down towards the Bouvier to have another look. You can see the concentration. You can only see the back of his head, but the concentration in that body posture. The giant schnauzer. Back towards the Doberman. Oh, what a surprise. It is the young Bouvier de Flandre that Lionel Hamilton Rennick has pulled out to win the working group. Carrie Wilbur can hardly believe it. What a surprise, Mike. She, she, she's going as if she was in a daze. Stunned. Now from the five left, it's the Doberman champion Amazon Sound Machine that's going to take group two. In group three, another youngster, Foxwood Incognito, the giant schnauzer. And for group four, it's the Hungarian Puli, champion Wetonian the Equalizer. But this year's working group winner at Crufts is champion Kanix Zena. Such a young Bouvier de Flandre, a lovely win. <laughs> If you thought judging was all in the eye of the beholder, I can tell you, you've got a lot to learn. This question paper here, I don't even understand some of the questions. So to get the answers, we're going to ask last year's best in show judge, Terry Thorne, just why the Kennel Club has determined that judges need formal training. Well, over the last, say, 25 years or so, it's considered that the quality of judging in the United Kingdom has fallen. Um, therefore, the Kennel Club decided that they would form a working party to study this and we've come up with our answers and they've accepted our recommendations and now they've got to be put into practice. Terry, what's, what's the first thing that a new judge has to learn? Well, to become a judge, it's not what you've got to learn to start with, it's what you've achieved and you've got to achieve something within the field of the breed that you're in by breeding decent stock so that you've proved yourself in the show ring and then others will respect your opinion when you become a judge. You've got to learn the basics about the dog. Anatomy, breed type, probably the most essential thing to know. Confirmation, movement, and judging the dog against the breed standard, the official breed standard of the, of the Kennel Club. It won't be compulsory, but let's say that the Kennel Club are putting into operation assessments, training schemes, so we've got to appoint trainers and so on. But if you do not attend, you're not going to get very far. Well, I think she's a very bonny dog, David. Uh, how have I done? You've done very well. You're quite right. Um, you covered all the points we talked about, but you forgot to look at the teeth. They okay. will want the bite looked at. Well, I'd better do that then. I'll have a look. Excuse me. Oh, they're very nice. Yes, yeah, fine. No problem there. Excellent. Well done. How am I doing? You're doing fine. You've got all the etiquette together. It's very important because it is a serious business. Just one thing I would suggest. Um, you need a type in. When, you, when you're going over the dogs later on, and ladies with hats have the same problem, you're bending over, oh, and yeah, if things are yeah. flashing about in the dog's face, the dog doesn't like it, and the exhibitor doesn't either, so you could use that and put it here instead. Good point. That's great. I've done the course, I've got my diploma, I'm a judge! Uh, not quite. You are in theory, oh, but you rats. now need hands-on experience of the particular breed that you're interested in, and then you've got to go before an assessment panel to prove that you are a good judge. And then I'm a judge? Uh, no, you've got to get an invite. It's harder than you think. Well, 
One of the more unusual events in the main ring on Friday was the demonstration by the Tricky Tykes Terrier Racing Team. Over 40 Terriers of various breeds charged up and down the arena after a lure which they occasionally managed to catch. I knew it wouldn't work. The highlight of the demonstration was an hilarious chase by the Hovercraft team, four delightful Scotties teased by their presenters, John Goddard Fennick and Lynn Moran. They'll never recover. Well, our next contestant in the Spot the Dog competition is Peggy Grayson, and we've got a terrier for her today. For you at home, this is the dog she's got to guess. Right, Peggy, your time starts now. 30 seconds, off you go. Tell us what you're doing. I'm looking for the width of rib, for the depth, Five seconds for the gone. shortness of loin, whether it's wide in the quarters if it's docked, what size it is and weight, um, what the head is like, gone. foreface, front legs, type of coat, and the head. 25 and seconds it, gone. It's an Norfolk. And you're spot on, Peggy. Well done. 27 and a half seconds. <laughs> it is a Norfolk. What's the giveaway? <laughs> oh, well, the Norwich have upright ears and the Norfolks have drop ears. You but I knew it was it. one or the other one. I felt his little fat little body. Oh, they're so lovely. <laughs> but the person who's got the really difficult job now of judging the group in the main ring, Peter Winfield. Obviously, I'm in the terrier breed, so I prefer the terriers because the terriers are very animated and they give the impression that they're enjoying it all the time. Some breeds are more static and you judge them sort of in repose, but I say the terriers are very animated and you look for this animation as being typical of their breeds. And it's that that gives them what I like. There are 25 different breeds in this group, the best of the 2,165 dogs in competition today, from which the judge, Peter Winfield, selected six dogs, and no bitches incidentally, for his final shortlist. This is a young dog here, only 16 months old. Blackdale Ringmaster, or Pat, is a wire-haired fox terrier from Ireland. Harry O'Donoghue's brought him here from Dundalk, and Harry first started showing dogs back in 1953. Proving you never give up, this is Pat's first CC today, and his first best of breed. And with me casting her expert eye over these six in the commentary box is Peggy Grayson. He's nice, isn't he, Peggy? Yes, he is. What a wonderful introduction to his showing career in England. Um, the first ticket, and here he is in the big ring, Right on tiptoe, tail on top, thoroughly enjoying himself. Very smart, but for me, you know, the cream of the six he picked out, Vox or Balboa Belmondo, is a four-year-old Kerry Blue. He's actually an Italian import dog, bred by Signor Tasselli, co-owned by him and Mrs. Leslie Herbert from Spalding. The handler is Don Munro. Vox has won four best in shows and apparently loves to play football. Isn't he a lovely coloured dog? I do like to see this breed that's the correct, beautiful blue. And he's such a smart dog, so well put together. And, you know, he's got real Irish charisma, hasn't he? He absolutely uh, does. Yes, he's got attitude, and that's what you need in a terrier. Yes, he, I do think, is my favourite of these six. Champion Rafos Fire Medicine, Kevin for short, is a little over two years old and he's a Lakeland Terrier. Philip and Barbara Greenway own him, they keep him in Newark. They say Kevin reminds them of his sire, some of you may remember him, Champion Rafos Medicine Man, who sadly died rather young, at only eight years old. Kevin is the product of 40 years of showing by Philip and Barbara. That's good going, isn't it, Peggy? It certainly is. Um, and he's such a lovely little dog. This is one of my favourite breeds of Terrier. Um, neat, smart. And look how he goes down the ring. Yep, Abs absolutely in balance going forward. Ross here is a five and a half year old Scottish Terrier. This is his third year as best of breed at Crufts. His kennel name is champion Mason Paper Chase, and his owners are Susan and John Gaskell from Rotherham. Today's win will help them to celebrate their 25th anniversary this year. And Ross is quite a cocky chap, rightly so. He's the top winning Scotty of 95, 96 and 97. And you've placed him before, haven't you, Peggy? Yes, I have. I made him reserve best in show at Darlington last year. He is a cracking dog to go over. He's got everything you want. He's got a lovely length of head and he has got the most superb hard coat. And again, he's one with great attitude. He shows all the time. He never flags. Um, look at him. He just thoroughly enjoys the job. 
He looks as though he's out for a stroll in the park, actually, doesn't he? Yes, I think he does. He sees this lovely green carpet and he probably thinks it's grass. <laughs> <laughs> this is a soft-coated Wheaton Terrier. He beat 112 others to win his best of breed. Six-year-old Coogs is a champion and Irish champion. Stevelin Blue Suede Shoes of Kaliskaya. He's owned by Sandy Tanner from Cheltenham, who's been showing the breed for 12 years. And you may remember that Coogs was actually placed second in the Terrier group here last year and today becomes the breed record holder. Isn't he a lovely dog? Gorgeous um, coat. I've watched him from the ringside many times, and he's, he's so well put together. And he's another one who he just commands the ring when he comes in, and he just moves out, and he's got that lovely coat and colour, beautiful coat and colour. Champion Saradan Forever Young is a two-year-old dog known as Mel. Judith Averis, who is the handler, co-owns him with David Scorthorn from Cheadle in Staffordshire. They've had considerable success breeding these dogs for the past 30 years. They say Mel is very willful, he loves children, and has a couple of Best in Show awards to his name, and I'm not surprised. No, he's a grand-looking dog, isn't he? And what a lovely neck and shoulder on him. And his head is perfection, I think. And he is another one who really enjoys the job. That's a great thing about the Terriers. They really do enjoy showing off. And look at this chap, you know, he's another one. He's on a stroll in the park too, isn't he? Is, he is, but, but, but they're so right up on their toes. Look right up, yes. They're, they're Tiptoe walking. Yes, so light on their feet. It's a joy to see them. Absolutely gorgeous. So this is the moment of decision. Peter Winfield must now decide which is the best of the six dogs that he selected. And he's in no doubt at all. He goes straight over to the Welsh Terrier, Mel, the two-year-old, making Judith Avrius the happiest person in Birmingham. A splendid winner, no argument. And the reserve goes to my favourite of the group, the Kerry Blue, the handsome Italian, Vox. And the soft-coated Wheaton Coogs, the six-year-old, takes group three for Sandy Tanner. And it's the Lakeland Terrier, Kevin, is fourth in the group for the Greenaways. A super bit of judging by Peter Winfield, a really sparkly group, but no doubt at all about the winner. Mel, the Welsh Terrier, wins his chance to try for best in show in the big ring on Sunday. A well-deserved win in the Terrier group. Now, last year we ran a competition for all of those of you who are watching at home, and the winners of that competition got tickets to come here to Crufts and watch Best in Show for themselves. Now, if you'd like to do that, come here and watch Best in Show for Crufts 1999. Well, all you've got to do is to tell us from which group last year's Best in Show winner won through. Now, that was either from the Terrier group, from the Toy group, or from the Working group. If you know the answer, the number to phone is 0891 114499. The lines are open now and they'll close at midnight on Sunday. And the winner of the competition will be selected at random from all of the correct entries that are sent in. You'll get tickets to come here and watch Best in Show next year. You'll get a lunch and you'll get a behind the scenes tour of how we make our programmes. Now the winner of the competition will be announced on next Saturday's programme. And remember, if you're under 16, you must ask permission to call. For those of you who are computer buffs, don't forget you can also connect to our website. There you can get lots of information about the show, you can get breed information and an up-to-the-minute results service, which is always worth having. Glittering prizes and the sweet smell of success could all be in store for this craft's debutante, the Grand Basse Griffin Von Dian, and this little lady is certainly from the top drawer. Good breeding is so important. We can trace their bloodlines right back to the 16th century in La Vendée district of southern France. They would have lived with a huntsman in a chateau, gone hunting every day for small game, even wild boar and deer. They have wonderful temperaments, fantastic characters. They love everybody, which is great. Attention to detail makes all the difference between a classic presentation and the tacky turnout. This is a really thrilling year for the Grands because it's our first chance to appear here at Crufts. I must admit, a slight vested interest. I've got two dogs entered, this youngster and his mother, and I can't wait to see how they're all going to get on. It'll just be wonderful to take part, to have Grands running around on that green base. We've got to get ready first, though. And, of course, a gal couldn't consider sailing fourth head held high without a suitable escort. She thinks she's a queen when she's sailing around the ring. So, she's... Uh... She's quite a different prospect from her son, who I was showing earlier, who's just a thug. 
This one knows how to play the game. <laughs> and now that she's been presented into polite society, she's looking forward to a frightfully bright future and that advantageous match. And she couldn't have got off to a better start. She won. John, you must feel over the moon. I tell you, live television gives you an adrenaline rush, but not as big as this, and I wasn't even doing it. <laughs> you didn't see any of it? You didn't come to watch? I couldn't watch. I couldn't watch. I mean, I've shown them so many times in the ring myself, but Mike is just so good at his job, but I couldn't bear it. I would have just been So dying. how are you going to watch the group? I don't know. I don't You've know. got a commentator on it as well. <laughs> With a very shaky voice. Uh, <laughs> how, do you, how do you think, realistically, how do you think uh, she can do who knows? She is, I mean, she's a beautiful bitch. There are going to be dozens of other beautiful animals in that ring. The thrill is having shown a grand here, that was good enough, and having one best AVNSC is just... First Crofts, it's got to be a fix. <laughs> you need a dog with a little extra something to win. It's not sufficient just to be a good example. It does need a sparkle. Oh, no, she just sparkles really on her own. She doesn't seem to need anything special. Well, he's a chocoholic. If I tell him he's going to get a chocky, then uh, he will sparkle. Yes. It's just nice. It's, it's a nice hobby. It's a very tiny, expensive hobby, but it's a lovely hobby as long as you keep things in perspective. Well, we probably are mad. I think I am myself a little bit, like, but doing this sort of thing. to spot the dog again and it's a hound this time our brave judge is Robin Searle and for you at home this is the dog that he's going to try and identify your 30 seconds starts now where's the head it's a long haired breed um, good order and good body I can feel that there's the head right just feeling for the teeth That's teeth are fine seconds head it's uh, it could be an Irish wolf hound or a deer hound. It's got that sort of feel to it. The ears are nice and fine. Nice length of neck. 25 seconds. Good. What's your choice? Very good. I would say it's an Irish wolf hound. Bang on 30 seconds. Well done. Over to the main ring now. And the hound group judge for this year, Zena Thorne Andrews. I'm very kind to the exhibitors. I'll smile at them and say a few kind words to the dogs because they're very tense. You can see their hands shaking on their collars and uh, the pressure's got to them and you just try to relax them as much as possible. So that's what I'll be trying to do. There were 2,905 hounds entered for Crufts 98, so a busy day for the hound judges around the breed rings. Zena Thorne Andrews, a hound expert doing the group, she has dachshunds and wolfhounds at home. Bred by June Davies, this beautiful Afghan hound bitch, Sir Clowey Standing Ovation, belongs to Diana Greenfield of Wargrave in Berkshire. Ebony's four years old, and Diana says she's a bit of a handful. Well, she's all right for me. You had an expression which really does gaze through you. A balance of shoulder and stifle angle which produces almost a floating gait. Finished off with that tail carried to perfection with the natty little curl at its top. As far as I'm concerned, it's all complemented by a well-turned-out handler. Quite brilliant. And next up, champion Camonstone Grimstone is a veteran bloodhound bred by Mrs. Crease and owned by Miss Corner and Mr. McKay from Durham. Well, this is a dog with a huge presence, standing still, magnificent bone, sound forehand and a balanced quarters, dignified head, super movement in front when he gets going. But, oh dear, what happens at the hind end? Well, I don't know, but perhaps least said, soon as men did. <laughs> it's difficult, isn't it, when you're commentating, because you want to do the best for these dogs, but this one is not doing himself any favours behind, is helping. he? It <laughs> wasn't helping much, was he? <laughs> a very well-known boardzoy, this champion, Starborough Gorset Red Banner, a five-and-a-half-year-old bred by Lorraine Marchant and owned by Julie Stephen-Smith. He was best of breed and Group 4 at Crufts last year, so he's got a record to beat. He is another great-looking dog, isn't he? Markedly male, a super head and neck, lovely depth of chest, a correct top line by anybody's standard, and glory of glories, sound as a bell behind. It'll take a good one to beat him into second place, I would guarantee he's, he's just super. 
I think it's wonderful how people manage to keep dogs in this sort of show condition all year round. I mean, he's gleaming with health. Champion Ty the Equinox, or Archie, is a five-year-old smooth Dachshund bred and owned by Steve Williams. Now, Archie has eight challenge certificates, but he's only been very lightly shown because Steve's a busy man. Well, he may be busy, but this is a super dog, and he'd put it down very well. The true template on which all the six varieties of Dachshund are based. Very striking dog, without the slightly heavy abdomen that some of the lads in the breed sport. Balance of length to height and a well-held top line, even on the move. Very neat. Motoring round that ring. Now, here's a name to conjure with. I'm no April fool. I'm at Tadandi. Diane Cook and Helen Lee's Hamilton Stavara. Diane handling, of course. He was the top Hamilton for 1997, so he's got a good show record behind him. Indeed. He's a breed that is Sweden's most popular hound breed. And who can wonder with that classic head shape? Glorious contrast of black and brown with the white beige chest, feet, and that tail tip. Coupled that with straight driving gait, well, there you are, a truly welcome newcomer. Now, I adore this breed, and this is a super young dog, champion Tecklegarth Ptolemy, the breed's youngest champion yet, owned and bred by Maria Larego. And what a super shaggy lad he is. I had the good fortune myself to judge him about 15 months ago, and I reckon he's matured into a really sound specimen of a genuine working hound. This is a breed that has had its problems with soundness, but this fella's got no problem at all travelling round that ring like a real good and lovely dog. He looks like he could do such a good day's work. And they enjoy life too, Otterhounds. They've got the most gorgeous personalities. Thoroughly happy looking lad. Tail wagging the whole way round, just what you want to see. Now, Xenothorn Andrews peruses her final six. The Hamilton Stavara and the Otterhound at that end of her lineup. That lovely smooth Dachshund, gleaming Borzoi. But it's going to be the Afghan, Saklawi standing ovation. Ebony made up today to a champion and taking the group. And nobody could argue about that, could they? Really looks the part. In reserve, that's group two. Well, we've got that gorgeous Borzoi champion, Starborough Gorset Red Banner, top sire for 1997, and he's improved on 1997's position at group four to group two this year. In group three, the lovely Otterhound champion, Tekle Garth Ptolemy. M Maria Larego will be chuffed to bits with that win. And for Group 4, it's that gorgeous Hamilton Stavara. Vincent at home, also the top Hamilton for 1997, so we've got a real royal group there. But nobody can take it away from Ebony the Afghan. So this will be one of our finalists for Crufts 1998. Well, basically, I adore showing my animals. I think they're absolutely fantastic to show. I love it. It's a uh, good competition. It's the biggest one of the year, and it's the first one of the season. But of course, we're all here together. All the top dogs are here, and it's a privilege to be here. You just can't help it. It's like a drug, really. You just got to go, and sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But it's a hobby. I mean, a lot of people go and play football on a football field, don't they? Run around and get cold and climb mountains. And we travel up and down the country all year showing the dogs qualify for us. This is the, the icing on the cake to come to Crufts. And that's all for this programme. But be sure to join us tomorrow here on BBC Two at 7 o'clock for the big one, Best In Show. From Jessica, me and all the team, good night. <laughs>